Hi, I'm Janice Tuck, the Creative Director of The Fun Music Company, and today I'd like to share with you a little teaching idea which will really help you, but particularly if you're teaching middle school or junior high school music classes. As many of you are probably aware, recently we held the Virtual Music Education Conference where I interviewed some of the top thought leaders in music education. As part of this, we did a few little tech talks and the feedback on these has been fantastic. We put together a program of lesson plans and talked through how to implement them in the classroom. So today I thought I'd share with you the first lesson from our Garage Band for Mac tutorial. Now this lesson is a lot of fun, just on its own. So even if you've never ever touched GarageBand before, well, this is the lesson that you could use with your junior high stu students or even upper elementary if you have Macs in your computer room at school. Hi everyone and welcome back to our second of these little tech talks. Now in our first tech talk, we discussed GarageBand for iPad. Well, today's tutorial and lesson plan series is designed in the situation that you have a computer lab of Macs to work with. Now I know a lot of schools don't have access to this, but if you do, then this lesson is for you. One of the confusing things that Apple have done to us <laughs> is make GarageBand for iPad quite different to GarageBand for Mac. It's pretty difficult to share files between the two, and they are fairly different in the way they go about things. Now to be fair to Apple, this is mainly just because of the difference on working on a computer and then working on an iPad. Sure. There are similarities and you probably can find a way to share files between them if you really, really want to. However, in my head, I really like to compartmentalise it and say GarageBand for iPad is here and GarageBand for Mac is here. So I would structure the lessons differently and aim to do different things with them. Okay, so here we are in GarageBand for Mac. Now what are we going to do with it? I'm going to follow a similar format to my previous tutorial for iPad and that I'm going to give you a series of lesson plans with the student assignment sheets and everything you'll need to go with it. So, let's start with lesson one, shall we? Okay, so when you start GarageBand for Mac, you get this screen and I'm gonna start by creating a new empty project. Firstly, GarageBand is going to ask me what type of track to create, software instrument, audio or drummer. I'm going to choose software instrument for this lesson. I can switch off this musical typing box so we won't be using it in this first lesson. In this first lesson we're just going to create a piece of music using the loops found in the Apple Loops library. So to start with we're going to click this little icon on the right hand side that looks like a little loop of string and that's the loops library. Now you might have different loops here depending on what version of GarageBand you have or whether you've paid for an upgrade. I believe currently you can pay around about $6 for a lot more loops and instruments, so that's well worth it. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, I've restricted my library to just what is available in the standard free version of GarageBand, and that is what you're likely to have in your school. Now firstly, when you switch on the loops library, you'll notice two types of loops. They are audio loops and MIDI loops. These ones with the blue icon with the little jiggly line on are audio loops. This means that they're a live instrument recorded with a microphone. And this means that they might have the potential to sound better. However, they can't really be edited that much. Now you'll see if I drag one of these audio loops into my project, there are actual waveforms that are displayed on top of it. The ones with the green icons and music note on them are the MIDI loops. This means that the loop is just MIDI data. Now let's back up here a bit and I'll quickly explain what MIDI actually is, just in case you don't know yet. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface and it's a system of music devices communicating together that dates back quite a few years now. In digital terms, it dates back to the Dark Ages as it was standardised in 1983. Whoa! Anyway, basically when you talk about MIDI data, what you mean is the file, or in this case a loop, tells the playback device to play a note at a certain pitch at a certain volume and at a certain time. Now you can think of it well like one of those old piano rolls that player pianos or pianolas used. 
The piano roll doesn't make a sound, the piano does. The piano roll just has the information of what note you want to play and when. And that's like a MIDI file, as it instructs the synthesizer, which in this case is your computer software instrument, with which note to play. That analogy is still in use, as you'll see the term piano roll used quite a lot in music sequencer software. In fact, we'll use it in this tutorial series. So if I choose a MIDI loop and drag it into my project, you'll see that the loop itself is green and that there are very small dots and lines appearing on it. That means that there is MIDI data in the loop. If I double click into it, the piano roll editor should appear in the bottom part of the screen. I can also shift to school mode if I wish also to see what it looks like in notation. Okay, so it's pretty important that you and your students have an understanding of these two data types to work with GarageBand. That's the reason why when you go to add an extra track with this plus button here, it's going to ask you if you want to add a software instrument, audio or drummer track. Let's ignore drum up for now and just choose a software instrument or audio. I'm going to refer to software instrument tracks as MIDI tracks, as that is what they are. You'll notice that if I try to drag an audio loop into a track that has already been set up as a MIDI, then it won't let me and it will bounce back. However, I can drag loops into empty space below my already created tracks and GarageBand will create for me a track with the correct settings. Okay, so get your students to experiment dragging some loops from the GarageBand loop library just to see how it works. Now, let's start again and try to build a bit of a song. Let's delete those tracks I created so I can start fresh. You can delete a track at any time just by selecting it and hitting delete on your keyboard. Now I'm going to start with some drums. Can you see all these buttons at the top of the loop library? Now this allows me to refine what I'm seeing below by instrument and style. So I'm going to hit all drums and I'm going to just scroll down to see what's available. I'm going to choose MIDI loops today. You can have them choose audio ones if you want but I'm going to go with MIDI so I can show you what's going on. So I've got a series of hip hop beats here and some Southern rock drum beats as well. Today I might choose some hip hop. Of course, you can choose whatever you wish when you're doing this with your students. I think I like hip hop beat two as the basis. So I'll drag that into my window. Now you'll notice that because it's MIDI, I can double click it and I'll get the piano roll shown below. Now that loop only goes for four bars and I'll need it to go for longer. So to loop it, I need to hover my mouse over the right hand side until this funny little icon appears. Then I can drag to the right and you'll see it repeat as many times as I want it to. Let's stop it after eight bars. That should be enough for now. So there are the drums. Now let's find some bass. So if I go into my loops library and click reset, then bass, I can see what is available for me. Again, you might have more than me in here as I've restricted this tutorial to just the free GarageBand standard loops. I'm going to choose here under scale, either minor or good for both. This is because we're going to do something with the same track in the next lesson in a minor blues key and I want it to sound good for that. However, I'm not going to explain that to the students now. I'll just advise them to select minor or good for both. I can preview what each loop sounds like just by clicking them in the loops library and when I've found one I can drag them into my project. I'm going to choose the MIDI loop funky muted bass but you can use whatever you like. I'm choosing the MIDI loop so I can show you what's going on. But if your students want to use the audio ones, that shouldn't be a problem either. Okay, so you'll see when I drag that in, that it's only two bars long. So I'll need to loop it out like I did before. Okay, so now I've got some bass and some drums, and that is probably enough to get them to do for the first lesson. 
encourage them to think less is more and make more musical choices in what they do. Task B of this lesson is to create two contrasting sections of eight bars each, consisting of a drum beat and a bass line, and then save the project. Task C is then to be able to add some volume graphs over the top. Now you do this by clicking this funny little looking icon here to show the volume controls. Then you can choose volume or pan from the drop down list. And then I can activate the controls with this little button. Then I can drag this line up and down to change the volume. I can also add control points by holding down the control key and clicking on the line. So I can make it fade by doing this and make it increase volume by doing this. Okay, so that is lesson one. Three tasks that the students have to complete. So what did you think? Was that useful? People who purchase tickets for the Virtual Music Education Conference can log in right now and access the full tutorial series and lesson plan set that this comes from. Now because this is a virtual event, tickets are still available and they will be until we sell out of bonus packages. So if you missed out for any reason, you can still get this amazing professional development opportunity just by following the links below this video.